Hey, what's up, and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where we're bringing it back to our X Men series rewatch with X Men Origins Wolverine, which, of course, just like The Last Stand, is one of the most hated films in the entire universe. But unlike The Last Stand, I'm not going to sit here and defend it because it definitely has a lot of problems associated with it. I can tell you that my original score for this movie was the worst of all X Men movies at 64%, and that that score has actually gone down. What it has gone down to, I will not tell you until the end of this review, so stick around for that. First, I just want to talk about some of the good things associated with this movie because it's not all bad and it would be wrong of me to say that it is. This is actually one of the most ambitious movies that I've ever seen in the X-Men universe and ambition isn't something to be feared. It's actually something very good if you can approach it at a good light. There's at least five really, really good Wolverine concepts that I feel like they wanted to make into five different movies, but decided instead to just fit it into one film. And when that happens, you have a bunch of mini movies one by one by one. The problem with that is each of these movies has really, really good characters that are in it for about two seconds before they disappear. We will get into that in a second. Another thing that I like about this movie is that it really is an action-heavy film. There's a lot of action sequences that I like from a completely shallow viewpoint. Basically, if I turned off my brain, I can really just enjoy everything that's happening on screen because that's what this movie's kind of all about. There's all these sequences that are happening all at once that are just fun to watch, that just honestly are. Another thing that I like about this movie is specifically how it began as Wolverine as a kid that moves into this intro sequence that's edited together really, really well that tells a complete story all on its own. Basically, Wolverine and his brother Sabretooth that are just moving through time, fighting wars, fighting side by side, and as this happens, you can see that transition in the personality of Sabretooth going from normal to something more sinister. I like that about it. Now let's actually talk about Deadpool for a second because if there's one major complaint most people have about watching this movie, it would probably be Deadpool and how they represent his character. I get it, you really like Deadpool. I get it. He's really, really cool. He's really, really fascinating. As we've seen in the most recent films, if you've ever read the comics, it's the same way. He's a cool character. And if you base your expectations off of how cool he is in the comics and how cool he is in the movies now, you're going to be disappointed with how they represent Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool in this movie. That being said, I don't care about source material. I only see the movie as the movie itself, and if the character within the confines of the movie feels okay, I don't care about the source material. Material. Ryan Reynolds' portrayal as Deadpool in this movie is actually good. It is memorable. It is everything that it needs to be to be vital to what's going on to the plot at hand. So I'm sorry, but I actually don't have any problem with how Deadpool is portrayed in this movie. It's just like Godzilla in the 90s movie. That movie has a lot of cinematic problems as well, but I have no problem with how Godzilla himself is portrayed because it's memorable, because it's creative liberties, and that's what I'm all for, creative liberties. That's it. Instead, my problem with his character comes down to my problem with almost every other character in the movie. It's a good character. It is unique. It stands out. However, it's not in there enough. So many characters in this movie are actually very, very cool and very, very unique, but they have so little screen time because they want to focus so much more on Wolverine. I get it. Wolverine's cool. You know, he's awesome. But one of the greatest things about X-Men is that it was able to balance all these characters together. Too much focus on one character over the other starts to make a film feel imbalanced, and imbalance is definitely one of the main problems with this movie. It's very imbalanced. It's very convoluted. Now, of course, let's look at some of the bad because there's quite a few of them. First and foremost, it's a very, very convoluted movie. It's trying too hard to be something that it's not. Like I said, it's like a bunch of movies all in one. Taken directly from my old review, I'm going to tell you exactly how cluttered this film is because it has a story of Kid Wolverine, War Fighting Wolverine, Mutant Army Wolverine, Canadian Dating Wolverine, Construction Man Wolverine, Newly Adamantium Discovered Wolverine, and Revenge Wolverine. All the meanwhile, you have to keep track of what's happening on the outside world and all of these X-Men being introduced and whatever the heck is actually happening all around. It's too much. Like I said, it really should have been split along the lines of several movies if that's what they wanted to do. Now, even though it is cluttered and convoluted and what have you, I feel like these little mini stories actually have depth and value to them if they were given enough time to flesh out. 
but because they're not fleshed out, what you have in the end is just a bunch of action set pieces that mean nothing. Another problem with this movie is that it ignores everything that X2 did for the series, did for Wolverine's character. The idea set forth in X2 is that it doesn't matter what Wolverine's origin even was because it only matters who he is now. That was the message that X2 gave us. And even past that, Everything that's actually origin specific in this film is just rehashing what we already know from X2. Which means as a whole this movie is kind of pointless. I can easily say that I don't think I hate it as much as most people do, but it really is a very big mess. So here's where I'm going to rate it. My original score was 64% and it has gone down 10% to 54%. So once again, of course it is the lowest rated X-Men movie in my possession, so mm, what can you do? Guys, tell me what you thought of this weird spin-off prequel story in the comments down below. As for YouTube, make sure that you hit subscribe, like the video, and hit the little bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out!